Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So you may have seen one of my recent videos where I showed you how to use Mishtastic on the TT Go LoRa modules. If not, then take a look at that video after this one. But in this video, I want to show you another application that can be loaded onto these modules. Now in the Mishtastic videos, I showed LoRa operating at 868 megahertz. But for this project, we're going to use the 433 megahertz band, i.e. 70 centimeters. This means that even though these modules look the same as the ones in the previous video, these modules are designed for transmission and receive solely on 433 or 470 megahertz or thereabouts. Now this application is called LoRa APRS. What this allows you to do is set one module as an eye gate and another module as a tracker. Essentially, the eye gate will be in a fixed location with a direct connection to the internet via the onboard Wi-Fi. Now the tracker module would be mobile and use the onboard GPS to send packets to the eye gate module. I guess the question you might be asking here is why? Why would we want to use LoRa for APRS when we already have a good working system on the two meter band using AFSK modulation? I guess the simplest answer to that question is because we can. And ham radio is all about experimenting with new technologies and learning in the process. I went ahead and installed the iGate at home, connected to my dual band collinear antenna, which is mounted on my chimney. I then connected the tracker module to my car's dual band mobile antenna and went for a drive. And the frequency that I'd set the modules to were around 439 megahertz. But remember, these modules are only rated at around 200 milliwatts of RF power. Now on the map here, you can see each red dot is where the eye gate received my signal and sent my position to the APRS network. I had driven further than this, but it appeared my signal was only received when I was around three to four miles away and when I was pretty much at the same altitude as the eye gate. Not bad considering I was mobile and only transmitting close to 200 milliwatts of RF power every 60 seconds. A solution to increase the output power from the tracker module would be to use an amplifier. I have this amplifier, which I've used before on various projects, which has an output of around 2 watts, depending on what band you're using. It also supports a very wide range of frequencies, so it's quite useful for the band that I want to use. I'd like to mention that when connecting amplifiers, especially one like this to transmitters, it's important to ensure that the output is clean and not splattering across the band. This can be accomplished by using filters if required. Luckily, the output while using this amplifier looked pretty clean on my test gear. So here's the setup in the car with the amplifier connected. We have the amplifier being powered from my car's battery and the tracker module is using its own battery. I'm also using an external GPS antenna, although it's likely not necessary, but it does perform extremely well. The amplifier output is then connected to the antenna on the roof of my car, which is just a dual band 270 mobile antenna. Now before I show you the results of using the amplifier board, let's take a look at how easy it is to install the APRS firmware onto these LoRa boards. First, we'll install the iGate firmware. The iGate would be the device which sits at home connected to your outside antenna. The iGate is also configured to connect to your home Wi-Fi, so it has internet access. Now internet access is required so that when the iGate receives an APRS packet via RF, it can then forward it to the APRS servers automatically and in real time. The application that we'll use to load the firmware and edit the config files is called Visual Studio Code from Microsoft. Now this is available as a free download and it supports Mac OS and Windows. Now, once you have Visual Studio Code installed, you will need the platform IO extension. Simply navigate to the Extensions tab and search for Platform I.O. Then click the Install button. Once installed, we can then click on Clone Repository button, which will prompt for a repository URL. You can get this URL from the APRS iGate GitHub page like this. Then just paste it into the entry box and hit Enter. You'll now be prompted to locally save this repository. Once saved, you can then open the project. And the file that we need to edit is called ls-cfg.json. 
This is where you need to set things like your iGate call sign, an IP address for the LoRa board if you don't want to use DHCP, and then the SSID and password for your home Wi-Fi connection. You also need to set the beacon message, set a Latin long for your location, and make sure the APRSIS is enabled. You'll also need to enter an APRS passcode so that the LoRa APRS iGate can authenticate on the APRS servers. Now this is easy to generate and it's based on your call sign you use. Just Google how to generate APRS passcode and you'll find a few places online where you just enter your call sign and a passcode is given to you for free. If you want your iGate to also act as a digipeter and send the periodic beacon message out, you would need to enable it here. Now in the UK, you need an NOV to use these unattended, so please check with your local laws. Lastly, we need to configure the frequency the iGate will use. Under the same section, you'll also see specific parameters for the LoRa packet. Now, I'd advise to leave these as default unless you know what you're doing. But if you do change these settings, such as the spreading factor, you will need to make sure your tracker module has the same settings. Now, once all these settings have been entered and saved, you now need to compile the firmware. You can start the compilation by pressing the compile button on the bottom bar. Once the firmware has finished compiling and hopefully you didn't get any errors, you can now upload the firmware to the LoRa board by pressing the upload button also found on the bottom bar. Now make sure you have your LoRa board plugged into your computer before pressing the upload button. And once uploaded, there is one more procedure to follow and that's to upload the configuration settings that we previously made. To do this, click the little alien symbol on the left bar and then click Upload File System Image. You can see the status of this in the terminal window below. And once finished, you should now see on your LoRa board's OLED that it is rebooted and connected to the APRS network. To ensure that the connection is working, you can visit APRS.fi website, zoom to your location or the lat along that you put into the board and you should now see a marker with your iGate call sign. Now to install the tracker firmware onto your tracker LoRa board, you can use the same process as for the iGate. Simply clone the repo and open the project. This time, the file you need to edit for the tracker is called tracker.json. Here you can set a few options, such as your call sign, obviously with an SSID, so dash and then a number. You also need to do the same for your iGate. We also can set the beacon message text. We can choose whether the smart beacon is enabled or disabled. And of course, the transmit and RX frequency. You can also adjust the power output, which ranges from 1 to 20 dBm. I would not suggest to change the spreading factor or signal bandwidth settings unless you know what you're doing. What's also nice about this is that you have a PTT output control, which will activate a GPIO pin during transmit. This is great if you want to toggle an external amplifier for an example. So compile the firmware as before and then upload it to your tracker module. Lastly, you need to do the same as the iGate and click on the upload file system image to complete the configuration. Now you should have a working iGate which is connected to your internet and waiting to receive APRS packets. And you'll have a tracker module which you can carry around with you or like I am about to show you, we'll have it installed in the car and have your location tracked on the APRS network. So as shown before, here is the setup in the car. Now notice the red flashing LED on the tracker board. Now this indicates that the LoRa board is receiving a valid GPS signal. Also note that the tracker module will not transmit your location packet without a valid GPS signal. So make sure this is working before setting off. So I went for a drive roughly a 10 mile round trip with the furthest point around five miles away. I would have liked to drive further, but I'm still recovering, so I didn't drive out for too long. After the journey, I took a look on the APRS.fi website to see how well this tracking solution worked. And to my amazement, it tracked nearly all of my transmissions. Now for this test, I did have Smart Beacon enabled. Smart Beacon will effectively control when the LoRa board transmits a new location. If you are stationary, then there is no need to send multiple packets of the same data. Whereas if you're driving faster, the frequency of the transmitted packets will be more frequent as you're traveling greater distance. 
It appears from the raw data log that most packets contain information relating to the tracker's position, battery level, and current drain on the battery. While every 10 or so packets also contains the pre-configured beacon message to let others know about the setup that you're using. Also included in the APRS packet is the altitude data for each point. This helps while surveying the coverage area of the eye gate. Well, there you go, guys, an overview of the LoRa APRS project. I think it's pretty cool. And in the future, I'll be doing some further tests with just using the standard 200 milliwatt output from the tracker board, maybe traveling further distances with a higher altitude. It would also be interesting to see exactly how far this would work without an amplifier. Now I have currently an NOV application in with Ofcom here in the UK, and hopefully it will get approved soon. But this is only the second NOV that I know of for this type of APRS eye gate. Now I'm sure you guys have lots of questions or ideas about this, so please leave them all in the comments section below, and then we can all discuss. Anyhow, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, then please don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Until the next one, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.